Uh, oh, shit. Damn it. Um, hey, guys, guess what? My computer is restarting right now. I have a choice. Be right back. Oh, my gosh. Oh. And once again, we are waiting for Deech. It's always Deech. Hello, my friends. Record. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for the PebCAC podcast, a weekly information security show featuring some all around good people. It is week 15 of 2024. I'm Chris Louie, and off this week for spring break. With me, I have my co-host, the Cloud God, who has way too much time on his hands making meme videos. I wouldn't call it too much time as much as just stuck in the airport and trying to have fun. So that's, you know, it is what it is. You doing that on your phone or on your iP- on your Mac? I'm doing it on my phone. I think it's CapCut. Nice. Are you using CapCut? Yeah, how'd you know? Is it, is it watermarked? I forget. No, it's, it's just a popular app that a lot of the kids are using nowadays for the like transition videos and the like. Well, what's what's interesting about that is to export without the CapCut logo on there, you have to uh, publish to TikTok. But if you don't have TikTok, it still publishes it and saves it in your photos and it doesn't have the CapCut logo on there, which is kind of nice. <laughs> nice. You kind of work on it. a hack. Yeah. You found a hack. Nice. Just or don't have to does it cost you phone. per does it cost you per per cut no no it's free it's free yeah freemium i think there's in-app purchases you can buy yeah i think there was like some ai stuff on there once it was actually pretty good a lot of the, the content on there was crap but you know for what we use it's pretty good i got some laughs got yeah. some giggles at my uh, some memes my uh customer event the other day so may, may have pushed the envelope a little too hard, but that's, that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, those, those videos you've been sending us have been pretty questionable to put in front of customers, Brian. Uh, well, not the ones about us guys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Glenn Medina, or shall we call him Patio Working Glenn, or PWG. How's the weather up there in NorCal today? It's beautiful today. It says 65, but if you go outside, it feels like mid-70s. It's not, you know, like I said, you can sit outside, not sweaty at all. I'd be out there right now if it wasn't for the fact that I don't want you guys to hear the, the birds and the background noise of nature. Yeah, we you need never some hear real the life. end of it from me of the post-processing that we're required for that. Yeah. We're gonna be... Would you say Minty Hummer? <laughs> You're going to, uh, I said, no, we need that. We need to have that on there. So let people know we're yeah. real. Maybe uh, yeah, Chris, so you can insert a background track. Yeah. You know what you will get is my uh, work PC overheating right now, the fan in the background. So sorry about that to all the listeners. I'll do my best to edit it out. Sorry to Chris who has to edit that out. Yeah, that guy's a loser though. Yeah. I don't understand why your laptop has to spin the way it does. Oh, it could be ZCC. Definitely it's an island not. browser he installed on it. <laughs> no, it's not the browser. No way. Not the browser. Can't be the browser. No guess this week, but we do have one booked for next week. Combined, we have decades of information security experience in here, not just to educate, but to entertain. We've got four awesome stories for this week, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This week, we're going to talk about OPSEC 101, why you should MFA all of the things. For our third topic, Apple has an MFA bombing problem and close with expensive but worth it items talk. Now, before we get started, last week's episode we recorded very late at night, and as is tradition, our evening episodes are typically drinking episodes. We were supposed to start recording at a certain time, but one of our co-hosts was not available at that time, so two of us showed up already drinking, and we had to wait two hours for our third host to show up. That might explain why the end of the episode last week sounded the way it sounded. Why did I sound great? Really like good? I had, like I had not <laughs> drank all night, and you guys did. I thought, I thought it was a great episode. It what was a great episode. About? It was. But just saying, it's uh, that's that's our evening recording episodes are typically drinking episodes. Usually when we record on time, we're fine. But if somebody's two hours late and more drinking happens during those two hours, the... Uh, shall I say voice quality might go down a little bit by the time we record. Yeah. I'm more impressed that you guys waited two hours for me. I thought you would have recorded without me. That That's crazy stuff right there, recording at 11. What was that, night. a Thursday night? 
was Thursday night. It was Thursday night. Wednesday night. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it had to it had to get done because you yeah. had to give time Chris time to do the edits. Yeah, still you can still record it out. You, you don't need me on on the pod. Come on now, boys. Well, it's yeah. not a show without you, Brian. Let's be real. Yeah, no, and even if we just have, even if it's Brian or Glenn or a guest, it's usually more fun to have at least three people. I think we found four is the sweet spot. We have one guest when we had too many guests we all start talking over each other but i think four or three is the right number we'll start calling yeah. those those episodes protect our parks that's when i think rogan does it with like six other dudes and it's just complete <laughs> chaos and they're drinking yeah. we know one is definitely not gonna work because chris did it one time and <laughs> i it was did. like <laughs> was the listener it's probably the, the most listened to episode yeah it was the highest highest listenership <laughs> I remember that in this good old solo episode. Both of you dropped out last minute. But the show must go on. For our first topic, investigators over at Bellingcat have noticed that the wanted notorious drug kingpin, Christopher Kinahan, leader of the Kinahan drug cartel, keeps leaving Google reviews for restaurants and luxury stores in various countries he's been visiting. He's left reviews in Spain, Egypt, Zimbabwe, and Hungary potentially exposing a map of his location to U.S. authorities who are offering a $15 million reward for information on Kenahan and his son's locations and their arrest. The reviews often include photos of the restaurant, which sometimes feature photos of the Irish drug lord himself. The Google profile, as well as the email associated, match one that was connected to him in the past, and it was linked to a physical address that has popped up in U.S. documents sanctioning, sanctioning Kinahan. Irish police believe the gang has amassed profits over $1 billion through the trade of illegal narcotics, arms trafficking, and money laundering over the years. So I, I believe the $1 billion number because I think the covert drug nonsense or illegal drug industry is like, is, it's actually probably bigger than the legal drug industry. So it's probably in the trillions. trillions. Yeah. Trillions. Yeah. And uh, I think he's like, I don't know that he's actually doing this. I think he's just trying to throw the scent off for the dogs, let them go in, in various directions. What do you guys think? Who's going to be blatant enough to do something like that? Where all they do is just leave reviews of restaurants. <laughs> Maybe like Pablo Escobar, like when he was on the run and he had to hide in safe house, a different safe house every night. Like, why? Why would you do that? Why, what? Why is it so important that you say I had a good experience at this restaurant and I ordered the ribeye must get like? Why? Why is that a thing? I don't get it. Is that a flaunt or a, a nan and nanny boo boo yeah. to the to the uh, to the cops? Can't catch me. It could be. I don't know. I don't think he's actually doing it. I will tell you guys that my my wife likes to leave not Google reviews but Yelp reviews, and this is very controversial. But she will leave a a, a Yelp review if the restaurant has a paper straw so she does not like paper straws so her <laughs> review on it is always like this place sucks because they have soggy paper straws i bet she has a field day when she visits out here in california oh yeah every, oh, everywhere the heck it's even in she hasn't been canceled yet she hasn't been canceled yet for wanting paper for hating pe hating on paper straws you know I, I think it's less about like the good that it does and more about how it ruins the drink absolutely 100 mm -hmm. percent you get a paper yeah. straw or bamboo straw. You get a drink to go. You throw it in your car. By the time you get home, that thing's soggy and unusable. Like a wet noodle. Yeah. Yep. Nobody likes a wet noodle. Try putting that in your mouth. Right, Glenn? <laughs> I don't, wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Brian would, though. No, no. I don't use straws. Christopher would. I don't, yeah, I don't use straws either. I don't like to suck on anything. Right, right, Brian? Yeah, it's like, like my stepdad <laughs> once told me. We'll leave it at that. So do you think this well, is real Chris? Some of the some of the Google reviews have photos and some of the photos in these locations, like if you zoom in on the background, you can actually see this guy in the restaurant or in the store at the time. So there's there's some legitimacy to it because there are actually pictures of him in these locations and the pictures that he posts match pictures of the actual locations. There is some legitimacy that he at some point he was at this location. That is hilarious. Deep fakes. I don't believe it. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> really? Well, if Bell and Cat could find him, why don't the three of us do some you know, open source intelligence gathering, see if we can locate him, and if we do, we get $5 million each. 
what is the the origin of this uh, this last name? It is definitely not from Mexico, is it? No, Kinahan, Irish. Irish. They're Irish in Ireland. Yeah. Well, I've never heard of. Uh, oh yeah, Irish boys. My bad. Drug cartels ever... are not always Mexican, Brian. They are when we're talking about it in politics for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> or watching Narcos. Or watching Narcos. Yeah. <clears throat> Have you ever seen a Netflix documentary or drama series or anything where, where it's not the Mexican cartel? I don't know. I don't watch Netflix anymore. Or South American. Right? Yeah. It's either some Latin American. Original Narcos was Colombia, and then they came out with Narcos Mexico Edition. That was with uh, Pedro Pascal. Pedro. We like Pedro. The Viper of Dorn. <laughs> That's just like that. This reminds me of that. Uh, that there, uh, Okay, so I did watch the Netflix special on John McAfee, and that was quite interesting. And I think that was where John McAfee sent a selfie of him to some reporters, and then the reporters... Like explicitly told the editors screenshot the picture before you post it, but they didn't do that, so they posted it and then gave away John McAfee's location that way. All right, party foul on McAfee for not taking that out to begin with. The, the beforehand, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think even you do that, right, Chris? I do. I always screen grab a picture before I post it just to get rid of the EXIF data. Now, where would you post a photo? Because are you? Because I know Instagram scrubs it already. Yes and no. The data is in it because if you post it and you hit geotag, it knows exactly where it is. So they store it somewhere. It might not be public, but for like the newsletter or LinkedIn or anything like that, I'll scrub the location data out of it. Nice. And Apple even has that new feature where when you airdrop it or you share it or you text it, it, it has a little option button at the top that says option you can remove the location data like signal will do it automatically but if you do it through like iMessage or airdrop you can remove it but you can still get data from the device like you know exactly what phone i have you know what resolution i took out all those things so it's more information out there it's not needed so i just screen grab it and then post it you, why you might be able to figure out what mac i have yeah i don't know that right now uh vdl is rolling his eyes with his Pixel 8. <laughs> and his Windows machine. <laughs> and it's actually, because it's it's called that because he has exactly eight pixels on his phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the screen resolution is resolution. You know. Yeah. Too funny. I had a, I could have swore I had drinks with John McAfee at a bar in San Jose. I'm sure you yeah. have. Everyone, everyone has a no. McAfee story. Yeah, yeah. A lot. There were a couple of us. I think it was after it, like a like a team event. We were sitting at a bar somewhere in, I'd say, say somewhere in San Jose. Anyways, we were sitting there, and one of the guy goes, "Is that John McAfee just sitting at the bar by himself?" And we're like, "No way!" So we all kind of took turns bellying up to the bar, going, kind of <laughs> doing looking the look. over at him. And then one of the guys just started talking to him and didn't didn't say, hey, are you it just kind of like hit, struck up a conversation? Next, you know, we're taking all kinds of pictures with him. And then after we all took pictures, he kind of kind of took off. He, he disappeared. <laughs> Got to pull the hole. You look familiar. Yeah. Mine. Yeah. Are you my dad? Guys love to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for that picture. It's too funny. You find it, we'll post it. Yeah. Instead of yeah. stable diffusion, our... we'll use... Glenn's yeah, well, photo with me. Glenn and McAfee. John McAfee. But there we, you go. I should ask Stable Diffusion, create a picture of John McAfee and Glenn, see if it'll do it. Yeah. I'm not going to find that picture now. I, I, I've got it somewhere. All right, dig it up, buddy. Picks or it didn't mm -hmm. happen. For our second Yo. topic, if you ever need a reason to add multi-factor authentication to your logins... A woman's jilted husband seemingly hacked his wife's LinkedIn account to expose her affair to the entire business world. In posts that have gone viral but since deleted, a woman only identified as Kelly has been posting on her LinkedIn profile giving very graphic details of her alleged affair with another man identified only as Garth, who works in Leeds. <laughs> Gareth. Gareth, not Garth. Only as Gareth, who works in Leeds. 
The post continues on that she's a mother of three and how she has to now move out of the house and staying at a friend's spare room while they sort out the divorce. The husband also allegedly changed her job title to something very explicit, but allegedly some act she's performed on Gareth from Leeds. Some of the comments of the post point out that she will likely have to leave the country to escape the negative press of this story. I mean, yeah, you could do multi-factor authentication, or maybe just don't be uh, a douche and cheat on your stuff. <laughs> you know, there's that. There is that. There is that. But in, in all of oh the reasons why ever I, that so with MFA turned on for, for LinkedIn, that was never one of the reasons why I did it. <laughs> I never, never even once thought, you know, well, just in case, you know what I mean? Like that would be. You have a something. jilted spouse that's going to out you. Yeah. Like, well, I, I, I can only imagine he probably would have had her MFA card anyway, right? I mean, her, you, he, something, he, he probably had access to all that stuff to begin with. Maybe, but if she I mean, he like, did took find her, out, if right? she had like, if he had a phone yeah. authenticator, then she took her phone, and that authenticator is not available anywhere else, or it's it's SMS based, and he doesn't have access to her text messages. It's one extra layer. We're imposing costs, Glenn. We're not preventing the hacking. Uh, We're imposing costs. I don't know. That was a very well written message. It sounded like it was AI written. What did you guys think? I about felt that? like it was written from the heart. I don't think the husband did it. I think she did it. <laughs> it was not. Yeah. That's what the she post, wrote it herself. That's what she the post alleged. She, it, it, yeah. The post opens says, I have not been hacked. These are my crimes. But it's, <laughs> I, th- I personally thought it was written from the point of view of the, hus- the jilted husband. And written, it was like he wrote it to make it sound like she wrote it. It's kind of that. Oh, absolutely. Reverse. Are you <laughs> saying I'm naive? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Not no, all. definitely. Uh, I remember okay. when you sent it over, I was like, oh, gosh, something else to read. And of course, it's like small text. I had to like zoom in. I was like, "Oh, this is juicy! Wow, that's <laughs> is it still there, or did they take it down?" It's deleted. It's deleted. It's, but there's lots yeah. of screen grabs going around the internet, and the article we linked through yeah. uh, posted here has the 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 full the post I- with image. names edited out. But yeah, but I mean, the post. it's it's not like this is the first time we've seen this, right? We've seen this before on LinkedIn. We've seen it before on Facebook and Instagram and all those other. Uh, social media platforms i've never seen it on linkedin i think that's what made this different like we've seen yeah. it in the facebook the instagram the snap all that but never on linkedin i think this is my first yeah. time i've seen person like personal business on this level on linkedin yeah i guess it's better than the old school method of just spray painting the car that says whore on it right? so <laughs> i think yeah. it's got the point out even better that? no yeah totally <laughs> Did, what was the comment section like did you actually find it I didn't find it, but the article referenced things things like some people were saying, no, uh, normally I hate reading about personal stuff on LinkedIn, but this is juicy or I'm going to go get the popcorn. This is really good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and the way the husband found out. So the post actually goes into it. So the way the husband found out was the wife opened up her Instagram and I guess there was like a picture of her doing something graphic or a picture of his junk or something. And then the husband's like, what's that? And then just spawned from that. Yeah, I don't want to see any pictures of any junk. I got a ton of junk that's laying around right here. <laughs> stuff I need to take out of the dumpster, if you know what I'm saying. Wait, what do you mean by junk? There is the, the comment that says she has to leave the country now that this has been publicized so much. There's, there's two other high-profile cases that I remember of people having to leave uh, their their school. So there's the UCLA girl. She posted a video on, I think it was on YouTube. This is probably 10 years plus years ago where she says, you know, when I hear Asian people in the library, all I hear is ching chong, ching chong. And then like she went viral for that as being uh, oh. being racist. And then she she still continued to go to that school. But any time she was in class, some, pe- some people would just start yelling ching chong, ching chong, ting chong. <laughs> and then they would just... <laughs> say that to humiliate her and then she'd have to leave and then she ended up having to to leave the school because of the uh continued deservedly though continued harassment from so that. had nothing to do with the fact that she was racist or anything like that right no not at all that she should have been kicked out anyway for making those comments yeah so i i yeah. help me understand this guys because like again i grew up there was no no one from asia anywhere within 100 miles of me so is is saying that is that making fun of people's last names is Ching and Chong, is that like a common last name? The common is more towards, that's what the language sounds like. So when you speak Chinese, they, they say it just sounds like you're saying Ching Chong a lot. 
Really? So it's like a derogatory oh. comment towards Asian speakers. Let me listen to some more Mandarin. I don't think I've ever heard that, but all right. Maybe it was a, a terrible impersonation. Thing. Okay. Yeah, probably. But that's that's what she said. And then the other one I thought was was pretty funny. This actually happened probably the year before I went to college. So there's a guy named David from UC Berkeley. And what he did, he, he thought it would be cool. And this was before Twitch and webcam streaming and everything. So he set up a webcam in his dorm room, gave his friends all the link to watch. And then he hires a prostitute and engages in activities you would normally do with a prostitute on this webcam. And then... All his friends are watching, and then he, the, the guy makes some comments. He, he says, like, hey, don't, don't don't expect much, and he, he made some, like, self-deprecating humor. And the same thing happened to him. So anytime he would go into a class, some people would spot him and say, hey, don't expect too much. And then he, had, he was eventually bullied out of, and he had to transfer schools after that. Sweet Jesus. I had a, I wouldn't call him a friend, work colleague, and he, like, very, very, uh, reserved classic i don't know what you want to call it but he confided in me that uh his daughter was like 16 years old she got pregnant and so the only solution was to quit his job and move out of state where no one knew them and he was gone <laughs> so he just, i'm like he just bounced <laughs> like i haven't I never heard from him again like he like it was like such a like a black eye to the family like you just you just didn't do that and i i would if I could find this guy, I'm willing to bet you that that is his daughter. That's not his granddaughter. Like it's his, he probably just assumed like we're just taking over another one and, and rolling forward. Yeah. Crazy. People are yeah. nuts, man. That's like straight would up. You your protection. Name? Yeah. Would you change your name? Would you try and do something? Would you move to another state? What was that? What do you, if you get that much hate, Hmm. I think, think you have to like the <clears throat> remember that guy Brock Turner he was the I think he went to Stanford he was Bay Area he allegedly mm -hmm. um allegedly did, he did, was okay <laughs> so he did so he did some inappropriate <laughs> things with an, a drugged unaged girl <clears throat> and he got off real easy like I forgot he got probation or slap on the wrist or something and then he moved to the opposite coast changed his first name to his middle name so people wouldn't recognize him but people on the internet are just blasting his name out there to make sure that people never forget that this guy is actually brock turner and he's an r word yeah yeah he was the guy he was an olympic comes from a, a well-to-do family right and was yeah. caught on top of a, a girl passed out behind a garbage can i think she was underage area. too wasn't she yeah, I don't know about the other age. I just I just knew that she was passed out. Okay, maybe, maybe yeah. not. Don't sue me yeah. for slander. But maybe, maybe not, yeah. but definitely yeah. passed out. But I, not, not able to consent. Wow. Yeah, not able to consent, not able to protect yourself, and got chased off, and yeah, and everyone was like, but he's an Olympic swimmer. Like, I don't care. The guy's a rapist, man. I don't do that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think any anything that would cause me to change my last name is not in, or my name, period change my identity is not something that i would do you know what i mean the only thing brian would legally change his name to is the cloud god <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> mr how do you do today mr god <laughs> yeah. Blast. happened to meatloaf he 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 legally changed his name to meatloaf so when people wrote about him in the newspaper they had to refer to him as mr loaf <laughs> That's mr weird. loaf uh, madonna changed her name right and then we had prince the artist formerly known as prince yeah. Yep. One word name people. Megazone. Cloud God. From F5. Megazone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I messaged him to try to get him on. He never responded. Mega, Megazone? Yeah. Megazone, yep. Yeah, yeah. You can find him on probably Xbox okay. 360 or one. I or found him on stuff. LinkedIn. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I can. Yeah, you can actually find him on them. Xbox. <laughs> message him on Xbox. He may respond there. Maybe he doesn't use LinkedIn. Well, you know what? Topic? People are nuts. Moving on. That's true. For our third topic, a new and frightening attack against Apple ID accounts has been reported by friend of the show, Brian Krebs. Apple users are reporting MFA bombing attacks against their iCloud Apple ID accounts. If you remember, MFA bombing is the act of pushing so many MFA notifications at multi-factor authentication notifications to the user that they eventually click yes to make them go away or had the victim accidentally press yes while trying to clear those notifications. 
Victims are reporting so many MFA notifications that it basically DDoSes their iPhone and Apple Watch to the point that they can't even use it. They can't unlock it or do anything. They're just getting so many of these notifications. They get alerts that their account has requested a password reset, and if they click on the Allow button, it will show a six-digit code required to reset the account passwords. Victims are then reporting that callers are calling them with spoofed caller IDs to show that the call is actually coming from the official Apple support number. And then the scammers tell them they're aware of the issue and read that to ask them to read the six digit code to fix everything. The problem got so bad that one Apple user bought a brand new iPhone and set up a brand new Apple ID account to go with it. But shortly after powering on the phone, they were still in the Apple store. They powered on the phone. The MFA bombing attacks continued leading Krebs and Apple to believe the MFA bombing attacks are linked to the victim's phone number. That was the only common thread between the two Apple ID accounts. An SMS-capable phone number is required to sign up for an Apple ID, but you can later change that to a Google Voice number or a landline number. I hate to go back on our previous topic, but there's one reason why I would change my name. Win the lottery. Simple as that. Yeah, well, relatives coming out of the woodwork. Yep, yep. Just, what happened to Brian? He's gone. Just, this is a ghost now. But that, 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 you have to look that up because in some states, yeah. you can collect the winnings anonymously, and some states mm-hmm. require you to disclose your name. So you have to figure out what state you're in. Well, that's not hard. I live in Arizona. Oh, you mean California figure out the rules. Saying, <laughs> you got to figure out the California's rules. California's a mandatory reporting state, so I would have to change my name if I win the Powerball. Well, I, I thought you could collect under a trust, right? I, I think in this, you can, you, yeah. maybe you do, but yeah. the there are certain states that require the real name of the winner to be published. Yeah. I don't know why that exists. That seems like a yeah. privacy nightmare. I, I could have sworn there was a couple winners in California that were represented by a lawyer, and the lawyer was the one that you know signed for everything on behalf of the uh, of the winner. So. It's good. I have to look that up. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. Then you won't have to change your name to Cloud God then, Brian. That's true. Yeah. Well, now everyone's Duke Silver. Know. Yeah. Cloud so many, God, so many winner. Names. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Minty, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> so going back to this, this article. Piece. Yeah. Uh, this is insane. Apple's going to great lengths to really boost these iPhone sales. Right, because if you remember, it was those Lapsus kids that used this MFA bombing attack to get into like Rockstar Games and Ubisoft and Samsung. And it was highly effective. And then those companies started doing the challenge response that says you have to enter a two-digit code that shows up on the screen in order to send a notification to reduce this. But Apple somehow took a step backwards, isn't requiring any of that. And the worst part is, which allows them to do MFA bombing, is there's no rate limit. Either you can just send thousands of these messages per minute. And there's, there's no rate limit on it. That's that's probably the most amazing part here is that there's no rate limit. To the fact, or to the point you can't even use your phone. Yeah. I'd be pissed if that happened. <clears throat> yeah, and some, someone said that they got a reset MFA bombing in the middle of the night, like at 1, 12.30 or 1 a.m., and then they just looked at their watch. And when you look at the watch, it says, do you want to initiate a passive reset? The only button you can see is allow. You have to scroll the scroll wheel to, to hit oh. the don't allow button. Dude, this is why I don't sleep with the watch on. Well, how do you track your sleep then, Brian? Uh, I wake it's up. Kinda... I was like, oh, I slept great. <laughs> <laughs> how do you check your sleep? You go? <laughs> My bed tells me how good of a sleep I got. So He has a what smart bed? Yeah. yeah. But I've got a, a sleep number. So the sleep number will tell you how many times you tossed, turned, and restless sleep whatnot bro they have a ten thousand dollar bed right now maybe even more than that it actually has like a, a fan built into it so it blows cold air on who's you. buying a ten yeah on your parts yeah. your private parts <laughs> no the whole thing just keeps it nice and cool like it's it just blows yeah. <laughs> ten thousand dollars for a bed is absurd although that Did that relates that relates to our next topic so maybe yeah maybe not so absurd yeah, maybe when you replace that bed up at the Airbnb because of all other reasons. <laughs> so. Certain visitors that came by. Yeah, and just obliterated your bed. You'll get the $10,000 mattress. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are disgusting. <laughs> Anyways, I don't have much to add to this, but whatever. 
you know, just if it happens to you, I mean, the hope is that Apple will just fix it and say you can you can send one password reset per 15 seconds. I think that's re more than reasonable. One per minute is probably reasonable too, but sending like 10,000 every minute, that's that's just, there's no legitimate use for that other than to do MFA bombing attacks. Bad stuff. I'm with you on that, man. Yeah. Totally agree. But be careful out there. If it happens to you, they said one of the potential mitigations is switch the phone number to a landline so that they get basically routed. You can't send a text message to most landlines. They'll just get routed into a black hole or send it to a Google Voice. Like, And that was a stipulation. You cannot sign up with a Google Voice or landline, but you can sign up with your regular phone number and then switch it later so people can't find you based on your your mobile number. For our last topic, and it'll be a rotating topic every week. This week, we're going to talk about what seems to be overpriced, but in reality is 100% worth it. So Brian brought up the $10,000 bed. I think that's absurd to spend $10,000 on a bed, but if it's yeah, let me tell you about this $10,000 bed, bed I just bought. I'm just kidding. I allows <laughs> you to get a good night's rest. Like you can't, you really can't put a price. If that's the only way you can get a good night's rest, you can't put a price on a good night's rest. So that maybe. Maybe it's worth it to you. you no know, value is relative. I think, uh, I mean, I'm not going to buy a $10,000 bed, but I will buy some nice sheets, right? Like that's a third of your life. You don't want to be sleeping on hay. That's true. What's sheets last count? you 30 Brian? years? No, no. Holy but, cow. <laughs> no, but no. Third of your life, I think he said. A third of your life yeah. you spend sleeping, right? So you might as well like get some comfy sheets. You don't want to be uncomfortable. Oh. Are yeah. they silk, Brian? No, I don't like silk. I, this is like a high thread count. What's your thread Egyptian count? Egyptian cotton. I don't know, like yeah. a thousand, twelve hundred, something like that. I don't know. Egyptian Those cotton. Are some good sheets. Yeah. Actually, they sell them at Costco. They're amazing. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Good sheets, and they are more expensive than like the three hundred count, but you definitely feel the difference. It's like sleeping on sandpaper versus sleeping on a cloud. So I haven't bought the sleep number bed yet. I'm definitely not buying the air conditioned one, but I, I am considering getting one where I can have my own sleep comfort because our bed as it is right now is like super like fluffy and whatever, but man, my back hurts all the time. I travel, sleep on a nice like hard bed and life is good. So I think I'm at the bite the bullet and buy a sleep number. Yeah, the his and her side is makes a big difference. My wife likes her side of the bed very hard and like like a like a plywood board <laughs> versus I like mine's very spongy. I want to melt it to my bed. I like a, so. sleeping on a cloud. Did you ever yeah, uh, fall yeah. into the crack? Uh, no. <laughs> Between the two sides. <laughs> we don't have that Did you ever mistake the she crack has, for something else? If you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> she has fallen over to my side because my side is a little lower as far as inflation. So, yeah. What Where is your you sleep say, number? Oh, this, is too, this is too soft. I'm 35. Holy she's crap. 70, 80. She like she she's supposed to be a 50, but I think she sleeps at like 70 or 80. So you guys and your numbers. I I still have a Casper mattress that I bought years ago off one of those podcast ads. I I still love it. Yeah, that thing's full of dead wow. cells, skin cells and like yeah. I guarantee your bed weighs at least four times more than what it weighed when you bought it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a washable cover uh. <laughs> he said <"Ugh."> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right so i have shoes to... yeah shoes yeah, that's good that's that's good i said yeah. good fitting and comfortable shoes sometimes they're pricey like the the ultra boost are tend to be a bit pricier but oh it's it's so worth it just like when running I was in... and walking yeah. comfortable shoes so hopefully you guys probably are as dumb as me, but I was in Australia. I walked by, I saw an, like, an Adidas store, so I walked in, and I was like, man, where are the Ultra Boost? No Ultra Boost there. She's like, but we got these. I was like, oh, this is a pretty cool-looking shoe. I was like, get it to me like in 13. She's like, yeah, it's a collab with Bad Bunny. I was like, oh, my God, I like a girl's shoe. And uh, she's like, no, Bad Bunny <laughs> is a male rapper. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, they, they didn't have it, so. Oh. But I did buy them off of StockX, so. Nice. Paid over retail then. Uh, it was at 179 so I, I would assume that I'm probably pretty That's close bad. to That's whatever close. it was. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like, it's the, the weird colors, like bring in like the, you know, the 450 number and stuff like that. But uh, to go back on topic here, 
Uh, an electric toothbrush, I think, is is worth it. Yeah. Lazy. No. Okay. I think it's just people don't brush long enough. I asked my dentist about that. He says, can it remove more? He's like, all that ultrasonic stuff, that's all BS. But will it remove it more? He said, absolutely, because that thing forces you to brush for at least two minutes. And that's what people well, typically don't know. Well, if you pay attention to the timer. So yeah. there's two sides of that, right? I don't know. I, I feel like uh, overall my uh, tooth health is uh, exponentially better with it. Maybe it's this, you know, there's a timer on there, so I just brush for as long as uh, it tells me to do it. So maybe that's what it, all it is. All I do know is that if I use like a regular toothbrush, like I, like my gums are like my hair, like receding. Like I brush way too hard <laughs> with that thing. It's like I'm not Jack Reacher. <laughs> yeah, I, I am not. I'm not for that. And so the only other thing I would say is worth it is uh, a suit. So I've always bought off the rack. And nothing ever fits me. Just I look like a fool. And so I, I finally spent some money on a, a good suit. I already know Chris feels the same way. And uh, Glenn says he has suit. no utility yep. for it. But... Yeah, I, I'd agree. I, the, the, the fit and the feel of a bespoke suit. And people notice. People notice. Like I, I posted a picture on LinkedIn um, when I had a, a good fitting suit. Not great, but a good fitting suit. And I thought it was nice. And someone noticed right away. It's like, hey, your sleeves are too long. Like They just... Right off the bat, just some jerk online, of course, <laughs> posted that. But then when you wear the fitted suit, people people notice. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, I can see that. I just don't see a need to wear a suit. Like, like before I used to wear a suit, like when I, previous company, I wore a suit 360 plus days of the year. Now I just don't see a need to. So thank goodness. Thank goodness. I, I, Island's dress code policy, shorts. Love it. So even in the office, even that. on boardroom day. Nice. Some Double advice change. that guy, friend, friend of the show guy gave to me. He's like, if you're ever in front of a group of people speaking, you always wear a jacket. So I have to at least have to at least have a good fitting jacket. Yeah. No, you'll get laughed out in my company. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Glenn? What do you think is good money to waste? I'll, I'll be honest with you. I love a, a nice MacBook Pro maxed out, even though they cost a grip. They're way better than any other high-end computer or laptop out there. Like, I love my MacBook Pro M1 right now with 32. and Your M1 or M3? Processor. It's an M1. Jesus. It's from two years ago, and it's still, it's still working, and it's no issues like your corporate laptop. So, <laughs> um, but, yeah. But I'll, I, I think I, I, I think money spent well spent on a, on a good laptop specifically the apple line is well worth the money i'm with you i think i bought my m1 max the same time you brought, bought yours i still use it every day i record the podcast mm -hmm. i edit the podcast it's like you take the same laptop in a windows machine and you get this like pc rot that goes along with it it will never run like this thing runs the same as the first day i got it it just yeah battery life has decreased a little bit but for the most part great investment yeah yeah, maybe the Apple line, uh, you know, the iPhones, I'll be honest with you, I've been lately, like maybe ever since the 10, the iPhones, I'd be like, eh, I got to get one every year. This 13 that I have right now, it, it's it's rock solid. Other than battery, I haven't had any issues with my phones. I'm on right? the 14. So ever since I'm with 10 you. and above. iPhone 17, yeah. that's the next one I'm getting. I can yeah. wait. That, yeah. it, and that's a problem for Apple. They're saying that, you know, first of all, phones are like 1500 bucks now. And second mm -hmm. of all, they said there's not enough innovation. People aren't upgrading every year, every other year like they used to. I did. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think but, I ever missed a year yeah. until this year. Yeah. Well, they haven't really innovated anything either, right? It's just what more processor, more memory. Yeah. yeah. Better camera. Space, camera, space, camera now. Price. Yeah. Better camera. Yeah. USB C and, charging. And, and you guys know what I ran before this. You guys, yeah. I, saw, I had an the iPhone eight. seven, and the eight <laughs> seven or whatever it was, right? The it was like button. it was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I imagine this thing is going to stay with me at least for the next ten years. So holy crap! I do need to get a new battery though. This thing is, it's a dog. I I was fully charged yeah. and used it at next to nothing, and I'm at fifty four percent for the day. Yeah. Okay. New battery is cheaper than a new phone. Yeah. Yep. On the on that note, on the Apple line, I would say the AirPods. When I first saw the hundred and sixty dollar wireless headphones, I was like, oh, "That's dumb. Who would pay that much for it?" And then now it's it's like I, I've owned so many sets. I it's no exaggeration. I probably use them at least ten times a day, just doing housework and just pop them in, listen to a 
podcast or an audio book and just so much utility everything just works just works it just automatically pairs with your phone picks up where you left off uh, yeah I, I, well yeah. worth it i'm totally with you on that one I, th- I think i had a set of samsung's before this and after i was talking to guy you know, love guy right he's like dude just go get an apple and i'm like no I'll go get the airpods i'm like no nah. he goes go get them you won't go back and he's right i have not he was right back since. Yep. yeah I will and say that on, uh, on, <clears throat> I like them, but there's one set of headphones that I use at the gym, and they're called like Status Pro. I think I saw some weird ad. It was like, it's better, right? It's it's not better for calls or like for presenting, yeah. but when it comes to like listening mu- to music, it's worth it. Like the the bass is deeper. I hear parts of music I've never heard of heard before yeah. in songs. I'm like, I actually like those. Yeah. The only thing I'd like to try, and I haven't really tried it yet, and I don't want to make the investment, is those tympanic headphones. Have you guys seen those? Yeah. They, kind of, no. they, they don't go in your ear, but they go right at the temple. Yeah. And so I think I see you wearing them. I haven't noticing. tried it. I, I'm just not sold off on it because it's supposed to be vibrating into your ear. I don't know if that's any better. So. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm, I'm perfectly yeah. happy with my AirPods. Yeah, I agree. On, on the note of good fitting shoes, good quality socks. This is something that for the first 30 some odd years of my life, I just bought whatever Nike socks there were until I found the Adidas, I think they're all called Climacools or something. And they are thick. Like you, you run five miles in thin white Nike socks. You run five miles in these thick Adidas Climacool socks. I'm like, I will never go back. I, I no, have man. to buy thin these socks, socks from now on. At, brother. Dick Sporting Goods. I, I have probably about 60 pair of them. Ankle socks are the best. I wear them with suits, and they're not thick at all. But <laughs> that's the squishiness. You're just trying to get blisters, man. Uh, I disagree. I don't know if it's the thickness or the quality of cotton or something. Something about these Adidas Climacool socks, it's it's exponentially better than, than anything else out there for comfort. Uh, Uber I Ride Home versus Catching socks. a DUI. I think that, that was... That's that's a good one. There, there's just so many like celebrity DUIs out there that says you're so rich you can hire a chauffeur. Why do you still drive your own car and catch a, a Bro, DUI? Dude, I I am flabbergasted anytime I see anyone. Two 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 things happen in real life. A DUI. If I see that, I'm like, who the hell gets a DUI? I, I'm like, I'm just blown away. Like, there, like Uber is literally everywhere. I don't understand it, and it's so much, especially in Arizona, where you get 30 days of mandatory jail time. Like, that is just insane to me. Wow. And the and then on top of the fines and the, in, and the increased insurance, I'm like, I just don't understand that. The other one is if I see someone smoking a cigarette, I just, and especially if it's a young person, I'm like, whoa, 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 like, I'm, what is going on right now? I don't understand at all. I just want to like go up to him, take the cigarette, and stomp it out. Like, have you not? seen anything on tv or the internet about how terrible these things are yeah doing the lord's work brian can you get like uber ride home versus like self-driving on your tesla well technically it's still illegal to use self-driving <laughs> when you're drunk i guess it hasn't gone to that that point yet so the the, the most surefire way to avoid a dui is take an uh, uber. uber i will yeah. say that i'm more likely to get pulled over for a DUI, if I'm letting the self-driving thing do its thing, they're like, whoa, you must be wasted. <laughs> it makes you, nah, man, this computer is screwed up. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, and then the last thing I would say is, is a good gaming mouse and or an office chair, because if you're in front of the computer all day, like you said, Brian, a third of your life you spend in bed, a third of your life you're probably using a keyboard and a mouse. Buy a good quality keyboard and mouse and typically the gaming stuff is is where it's at i had a a meeting with like this an introductory meeting with the the new cmo at these her name's joyce kim and she gets on i'm like uh real quick are you sitting in a gaming chair she's like yeah actually i am she's like i was told it's amazing and then like during covid like we're sitting down might as well get a nice comfortable chair so she's like i got this one and it's amazing so is i a I, secret lab I believe so. Yeah, it was a, dude, like, and it was yeah. obvious. It's a gaming chair. It's like that is there's <laughs> there's not an executive chair like that at all. That is definitely a gaming chair. Do you guys have a gaming chair? Do you guys have one? I don't know. I got a yeah. I temper I got a normal something. one from Office Max, and I think it's fine. Mine's on its last leg. Not, I'm ready to upgrade. 
Not to look down on you peasants or anything, but I don't even have a chair. I just stand at my desk all day. Oh, wow. You never sit down at all? I never brought an office chair to my new office. That's because your autism prevents you from sitting still. (laughs) Well, that and Chris doesn't work very much. It's like two hours a day. I work for now. I'm standing. He's always on the beach with his kids, you know. (laughs) Like I have a standing desk that I can adjust. I've never adjusted. I said to the stand level, I've, I've never touched it since. So what's the point, Chris, of getting a standing desk if you're not? I like the to option, the Glenn. Uh, oh, come a, on! If, this dude. if I'm in a horrible accident and I can't stand for ten hours a day anymore, then maybe I'll have to oh, sit. Oh my gosh! You'll never be in a horrible accident. Don't guys. you see that? Yeah, yeah, I'll try. What are you talking about? I will what are you try. talking about? I don't know about the gaming mouse unless you're doing games, but I use like the ergonomical mouse. It's got yeah, the, like the a good ergo looks, mouse. That mouth looks dirty. <laughs> Dude, the, well, no, it's not dirty. It's just wore out, dude. Like it's yeah, yeah. it's insane. But yeah, that that thing yeah. definitely helps out, especially when you're doing diagrams. Yeah, a good game, uh, ergo mouse. Yeah, maybe more specifically, the I tend to like the gaming mice better. It fits my ergo better, I guess. But yeah, my wife has a a vertical mouse because she has carpal tunnel, so she can't have her wrist in a certain position. So she has one that you hold like this. So you know whatever works Which for way? you, but you. Use whatever position you're in, whatever's most comfortable. Spend the money, even if it's a hundred dollars. Use it eight plus hours a day for until the thing dies. A couple of years, like it's it's well worth I agree. it. A monitor, that's also key. Yeah. So, yeah, big a good good size monitor with a good refresh rate. It's definitely key. Yeah, I have a hundred. I have a one forty four hertz refresh rate monitor, and then Ooh. I plugged it into an older device that only supported like 30 Hertz. And I said, what, what is this? Like, what is this that I'm using? I, I, you cannot go back to 30, 60. Was it phasing on you? It was, was phasing, it phasing on me. I said, what? It, it, it was almost like as if I was on some drugs and time was slowing down. Cause it was like, I'm just so used to that fast refresh rate. Can't go can, back. Oh, that's can funny. you see the refresh rate in like the, the settings and you like in under displays? Yeah. So on the Mac, I think go to displays, Ex- external monitor, and then yeah. it says refresh rate, and then it's 3060, 100, and then mine runs 144. Mine's at 75. Wow. Is that is that caveman? 75 is no, fine. Like 60 75. is usually good 60's enough for old gaming. School. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but 144 is where it's at. So the 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 built-in MacBook Pro says ProMotion. So I wonder what that is. Probably 60. Yeah. All right, hold oh, on. Shoot, one. mine doesn't even go up there. Mine only goes sixty. Peasants. Yeah, I know. Peasants. <laughs> Dude, this uh, Peasants. this old MacBook, this i five, whatever, doesn't even show the refresh rate. It's so old. Yeah, that's probably bad. thirty. Well, we continue to get great comments about our dad joke of the week. Dad joke of the week. This week, I'm up. My wife fainted on the baggage carousel at the airport. Thankfully, she came around. I saw that one coming. I (laughs) saw that one coming. (laughs) Coming around? Coming around. Yep. (laughs) Get around, get around, I get around. Oh, man. Beach Boys. Look at this. All right. All right. To wrap things up, drug kingpins on the run should not leave Google reviews. Add multi-factor authentication to your LinkedIn account. Be careful of Apple MFA bombing attacks. And spend money where it really counts. That's all I have for this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. You can find us all on LinkedIn. Links will be in the description. Follow us on Instagram at Pebcac Podcast. Thank you to all our listeners and subscribers. Rate us five stars the iTunes store on Spotify and left us a review. We appreciate you all spreading the word to help grow the show. The best way to find us is to search for the Pepcag Podcast in your favorite podcast listening app. My co host Brian Deach and Glenn Medina. I'm Chris Louie. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all next week. And as always, have a nice day. Hi, Felicia. Have a nice day.